in the door and he looks over and goes, well, what's this? And she says, who are you? <laughs> she got into him pretty heavy. And he goes, uh, you own this? And I said, yeah, we own this store. And he goes, oh, well, I, I didn't know. And he starts to back off. And I was pretty amazed. I mean, it wasn't that he, he was going to give me this made-up ticket. He was going to find some reason to uh, fine us, find some reason to give us a ticket. And I just was not going to. And I understand exactly where this woman is coming. We should not have to be the servants of law enforcement. We should not have to ask how high when they tell us to jump. When they give us unlawful orders, we do not have to obey. It is simply a power trip. It is simply harassment. And I'll tell you what's going on in New York City, too. There's another dimension to this as well. And I'll talk about that when we come back. What Adrian Schoolcraft uh, showed when um, he was a New York City police officer. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I'm going to take some of your calls this hour. The number to call in is 800-259-9231. Again, that number is 800-259-9231. Before I go back to the news, and I want to finish up with a story of those of you who didn't uh, hear the the, uh, top of the hour. Some some stations carry news at the top of the hour. I'll recap briefly what happened uh, to this uh, black lady who was committed to a psychiatric ward because she insisted that she wanted her BMW back that they had confiscated from her. Before I do, I want to let you know about the uh, new introductory prices we have of our new line of uh, InfoWars Life Select Food. We have for two weeks introductory prices, the lowest prices you will find anywhere on storable food. And again, one of the things that makes this very important, very useful, is the packaging that it comes in. This comes in slimline totes for space-saving storage. It also has uh, Ziploc. Each of the containers had the, the bags, the packages have Ziploc containers, so nothing goes to waste after you break that seal. It will last for 25 years. But What good would it be to have great packaging if you didn't have great food? This is food that is grown in the U.S. It is packaged in the U.S. We don't send it to China. This is all made in the U.S. products. There's no additives like MSG or autolyzed yeast extracts. This is a combination of low heat, dehydrated food, as well as freeze-dried ingredients that work together for maximum nutrition, taste, and shelf life. And again, if you buy one of the larger packages... You can get more variety in what you get. Here's an idea of how low these prices are. A two-week food supply, $79.96. A four-week food supply, $156. Can you eat a month for $156? This is incredibly cheap just as the uh, food is going in. Again, this is the low introductory prices. It's not going to be this cheap again after this introduction. But this is something that you need to have for your family. We have a very fragile infrastructure in America. The more complicated the infrastructure, the more fragile the infrastructure. And we all know that there are many things that could trigger a collapse of our infrastructure. It could be a natural disaster. It could be an economic disaster. It could be some kind of a a false flag. Who knows what could happen? You need to prepare for the worst. It's just common sense. One way that you can do it right now is to take advantage of these super low introductory prices, InfoWars Life Select Food. Go to InfoWarsSelect.com. You'll see that full line of products right there, or you can call 888-253-3139. And before I go to the calls, I want to finish up on this story. I had I was talking about it at the last segment of the hour, and I talked about it at the first segment of this hour. Again, this was a lady who was stopped at a stoplight. The, the policeman started harassing her because she didn't have her hands on the steering wheel. Did you know that was a crime? See, this is something that we've seen happening in New York City for quite some time. It was documented by Adrian Schoolcraft, a whistleblower with the New York City Police Department. This is a guy whose dad was a police policeman. Uh, he believed in uh, law enforcement. He believed in being a good cop. He, they, they punished him because he would not write up useless tickets that they wanted him to do. He recorded them for two years uh, wearing a wire. He did it on his own. And he recorded them talking about creating uh, quotas, how they wanted to arrest people for no reason whatsoever. They'd say when it was coming up to Halloween, they'd say, just uh, go out and grab the first three or four people you see, bring them back to the station, and we'll figure out what to book them for later. And then go out and get some more people. We just need to get as many people in as we can. They would harass people endlessly for nothing, for nothing at all. But then when it came to a serious crime like rape, like car theft, they would discourage people from reporting those crimes because they didn't want to look bad on the FBI statistics. 
Adrian Schoolcraft exposed this. They knew that he had a wire. His father, who was an honest cop and the kind of cop that he wanted to be, knew that this was happening, knew that they were gunning for him. He disappeared. His father started investigating, couldn't figure out where he had gone. They came to his house. They threatened him. And when he wouldn't give up the recordings, they took him away and committed him, just like they did this black lady. The interesting thing is, is that he not only had a wire on him in his own apartment, but he also had one on the shelf. And his father found that. And now you can hear that as part of the investigation. You can hear them threatening to take him away, which they actually did. They put him, uh, without notifying anybody, they put him in an insane asylum. His dad was able to get him out. He became a, a key witness in the in turning and overturning uh, stop and frisk. An amazing story. But here you see this still going on, harassing this lady for absolutely nothing. She has her hands on the wheel. They, they arrest her, then they let her go. But they impounded her car. The next day she goes to get it back. They go, that can't be your car. You can't be somebody who owns a BMW. We're not going to give you that car. I don't know what, what basis they were saying that for. But they committed her to an insane asylum. She wound up staying there for eight days. They injected her with heavy drugs. She got a $13,000 hospital bill. And now the people of New York are going to get a big lawsuit. This keeps happening. You know, there's an article in 2009 from the Cato Institute. One Bill of Rights for you, two Bill of Rights for them, for law enforcement. And they point out, and this is very relevant because of what's going on with Joe Biden lately. They say... Back when he was a senator, Vice President Joe Biden had a pet piece of legislation that he would try to ram through the Senate every year. The bill was called the Peace Officers Bill of Rights, an attempt to amend the omnibus crime bill, uh, streets of 1968. Even though Biden is no longer a senator, they said his legacy continues as the congressional bill that has now been introduced and in, back in 2009, law enforcement officers Procedural Bill of Rights Act of 2009 that was introduced that year by Bart Stupak, a Democrat, and Eric Paulson, a Republican. And they say the legislation seeks to limit how police departments can investigate cases of police misconduct, how they can discipline police officers found to have committed misconduct. The bill also contains a provision that would exempt disciplinary records from public records uh, records laws by forcing those departments to keep all personnel records sealed. When we have a police chief or a sheriff who wants to come after a, an officer who uh, acted in a criminal manner, he's frequently stopped by the police union or by one of these law enforcement bill of rights types of things. And, of course, Frank Serpico, who's been a guest with, with Alex Jones many times, has, has made the point, and rightfully so, that in any profession— you are going to have bad people. Cops are one of those professions. You're going to have bad journalists. You're going to have bad cops. You're going to have criminals in every line of work. But the question is, can you purge those bad people out of your organization? Or are you going to tolerate that? If you tolerate it, it becomes systemic. It becomes, it corrupts the system. And that's what we have. And a large part of that is because of this law enforcement bill of rights. Listen to Maryland's law enforcement bill of rights that was established in 1972. Listen to some of these issues. Officers can wait 10 days before talking to investigators after a trial, Inve after an incident. Investigators must, follow, must be fellow officers and no more than two can conduct questioning at the same time. Lying to obtain an admission of guilt is forbidden. This is standard procedure, however, for non-police suspects. Harassing, threatening, or offering rewards is forbidden. That's all stuff that they do to the rest of us. A union representative can be present during questioning. A three-month statute of limitations against people filing complaints against officers, even if the person is hospitalized. Complaints and investigations against an officer may be purged after three years. He may appeal his case to a hearing board of fellow officers whose decision is binding before a decision on discipline is made. So that's just Maryland. All these different states have these different Bill of Rights for the officers. The difference between their Bill of Rights and our Bill of Rights is that they actually enforce theirs. They don't enforce our Bill of Rights. They destroy 
our Bill of Rights. But they make sure that their Bill of Rights is enforced. And so who was it that was pushing all this? Remember when I started this article? It was Joe Biden. That was his pet project, to make sure that the police officers get a different standard of justice than the rest of us do. He put that out. Now Joe Biden is being called the Hamlet of the 2016 American election. No, not the mad prince, uh, not because he's crazy, but because uh, he's sitting there to run or not to run. That is the question, okay? They're saying that Joe Biden suffers, uh, many people say, from a lifelong foot and mouth disease. You know, quite frankly, Joe Biden has been very candid. That's what's gotten him in trouble. And even though he said some crazy stuff, remember when he was talking about Barack Obama and he said, I think he's very clean. And a lot of people construe that, say, oh, he's they're saying that he's clean because he's a black man and implying, you know, a lot of things that he said that were really awkward. Nothing to the level of Donald Trump, but that kind of foot in the mouth, or if you want to call it candor, OK, that will serve him very well in this election cycle. I mean, just look at what's going on with Donald Trump. My problem with Joe Biden, even before I knew about this law enforcement Bill of Rights issue, my problem with Bill, Joe Biden goes all the way back to the Clarence Thomas hearings. I can remember vividly, my wife and I were traveling uh, the uh, Appalachian Highway and uh, on vacation, and we were listening to the proceedings, and I heard him interrogating uh, Clarence Thomas, and he had a problem with natural law. And he's trying to pin Clarence Thomas down on his positions on natural law. And Joe Biden was absolutely livid, genuinely angry that anybody would believe that there was such a thing as natural law. What is natural law? Natural law are, is the principles that are laid down in the Declaration of Independence that says that we are not subjects to the government. We do not exist at the at the uh, pleasure of the government. They do not grant privileges to us. We possess certain natural rights based on the fact that we're human beings. We possess those rights from God. Those were the principles of the Declaration of Independence. And Joe Biden was absolutely livid. And of course, Clarence Thomas didn't argue with him because Clarence Thomas said, just, just forget I said that. I want to be Supreme Court justice. Let's just uh, pass on that. That's the kind of guy Joe Biden is. But he could do very well in this presidential election. Stay with us. We'll be right back with your phone calls. We're going to go to some of your calls right now. We were just talking about the police state, uh, we, how we lost our Bill of Rights uh, without question, uh, certainly after 9-11. Uh, there were a lot of infringements on it way before that, but it got very overt at that point in time. But, of course, our Bill of Rights, which is no longer being enforced, the police have two Bill of Rights. It's one of the reasons why we see such, uh, such a problem with police officers who step over the laws, that there's a systemic bias against that. And of course, we tied that back to Joe Biden. That was one of the things that he pushed for many, many years. I've got a couple of callers here who wanted to talk about that. Let's go to Tom in Maryland. You say you're a former police officer. Go ahead. Hi, Mr. Knight. Thanks for taking my call. I'm retired. Uh, I was going to call earlier. You were talking about uh, how the government was infringing on uh, liberties and breaking the law relative to fishing cases. That's what we used to call it when they would actually gather information. And you're absolutely right. That goes back, uh, I know personally, uh, to the 80s. In fact, I was working with a AT&T Pullman who had come to me and said, you know, I've been finding these black boxes on the lines, and what are they? <laughs> I looked at him and said, I'm not a tech. I, I don't know, but uh, tell me about them. He said, well, I think that there's some type of tapping device. And uh, come to find out, he had taken it to someone who actually did know. And sure enough, that's exactly what they were. So I told him, collect them, bring them to me. Uh, we'll try to put a case together. Well, oddly enough, uh, he got a couple of them. And... Uh, According to him, somehow he had him in his truck and he was trying to get hold of me. And he was called into his office by a very high supervisor who he had never dealt with before. There was a federal agent there and I told him to turn over what he had taken off the lines, never to take those off again, and not to be in touch with the local police. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So that goes way back. And it was something that we had suspected for, for some time because we had federal agents coming in and making cases that we had been working on. And they had info 